and now on to our second theme about the evolution of platforms. So earlier we were talking about unmanned vehicles and we were saying that they could be a threat to warships, but they actually can be also an asset. Uh, so the question is, how do you integrate properly um, either unmanned aerial vehicles, surface vehicles, but also underwater vehicles on, on any kind of warship actually? Naval Group already uh, integrates uh, air unmanned vehicle on, uh, on our ships, uh, on La Droit, on the uh, PHA uh, Mistral class LHD. And uh, so that's something that we are already used to, uh, to do uh, to the benefit of the, uh, the French Navy. So the, the challenge is to uh, uh, integrate uh, an unmanned vehicle is first the physical integration. You have to save some space on board to, uh, to uh, store the, uh, the vehicle, to uh, repair it if necessary, etc., to, to launch it. Uh, and then, as there is nobody on board, uh, we have to develop some automation to do that, uh, especially for the uh, takeoff and landing, uh, but also for the uh, launch and the recovery system for the uh, surface and manned vehicle. And uh, so that's something which is already uh, on board uh, French Navy ships and in development, for example, on the uh, new generation of uh, mine warfare system uh, to, to launch uh, surface and man, uh, and man vehicle. The other challenge is the communication with the, uh, with the drones because you need to have a 360 degree coverage uh, to uh, follow the uh, progression of your drone and to uh, recover all the data that uh, the, the, the drone is sending back to the, to the ship or to the force. And, and the coordination of all these drones is the, 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 other, the other challenge because if you have at the same time uh, several uh, air unmanned vehicle, surface unmanned vehicle, you have to manage the, um, the communication with them, the integration of all the uh, payloads uh, transferred to the uh, tactical situation of the ship. So that's the several challenges, the physical one, the communication, and the integration of all these systems into on board the ship, but also on board the force at sea. For the subsurface right now, it's more on the submarine side than the uh, surface side. Yes. For submarines, it's a very interesting issue also. Mm -hmm. uh, as usual, uh, it's, uh, sometimes it could be easier to integrate something on board submarine, but uh, often it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, talking about drones, uh, Naval Group is uh, already working on that and for years, and maybe you know that Barracuda uh, is fitted for uh, the integration of, uh, of drones, especially UUV, uh, taking benefit of the dry deck shelter, uh, which will be uh, commissioned as, as soon as possible. Um, but uh, if we are talking about UUV integrated on, on board submarines, uh, the main difficulty is that there is no electromagnetic waves uh, un under the sea. And you need to develop uh, very powerful communication blocks. Uh, you need to have a little bit more self-decision making uh, process uh, to increase uh, the autonomous uh, decision making of, of the drones. The main idea uh, is to be able to take the benefit of the development of the new weapons uh, as the F-21 torpedo, because all the technologies we have seen just before are transferable to UUV. That's the main idea, uh, and you can see that uh, with a smarter torpedo, everything seems to be possible, and then with drone, it will be the same case. Actually, it's not a big difference between a smart torpedo and a UUV. No. It's no, maybe, maybe we can talk a little bit about energy because uh, if you want to deploy uh, UUV for days or for weeks, uh, it's a little bit different than uh, one big torpedo for only one or two hours. Talking about unmanned systems, um, the US Navy is working on different types of unmanned warships and even thinking about uh, something that, that could be the size of a frigate with no crew. Um, do you believe that something um, that we'll see in the future? That's something Naval Group is working on? For sure, that's something that we are uh, thinking about uh, because it's, it's the normal uh, way uh, of the, the, the progress for, 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 for the fleets. But it's more a Navy concern. We cannot answer in the place of the, the Navy. Will they be capable of launching a frigate with missiles on board and with nobody on board? It's not to us to answer that. Technically, it will be possible, and we already work on this topic uh, for uh, bigger 
uh, surface unmanned vehicle, uh, but uh, that will be the decision of the Navy to go up to this technology. There are many concerns in terms of uh, uh, safety. We have already solutions. We already uh, developed systems to avoid the, the collision and things like that. So that's something that we already, uh, we already developed for, for smaller ships, but it's the same technology for, uh, for a bigger one. Yeah, the big question is, will they be capable of launching a weapon? That's the first question to answer. And uh, how long will be this ship capable of remaining at sea uh, for weeks? Because one of the main concerns of navies is to go for a very, very long time, very far away. Uh, so it's a real technical challenge uh, to maintain at sea a big ship with a full capability in terms of weapon detection, etc., uh, with no maintenance on board. So that's, that's a real challenge for us, and we are already thinking about that uh, in our uh, R&D development, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And that there could also be submarines or very big UV working alongside submarines, I guess. Yes, yes, of course, it's a, it's a main idea. Uh, we talked just before about the distributed uh, warfare, and we are talking right now about distributed underwater warfare. Uh, that means that uh, uh, submarines, but also surface warships, uh, will uh, rely over assets like UUV to masterize and to monitor Uh, all the underwater battlefield, uh, using also uh, seabed sensor, uh, nodes, uh, network, and so on. And uh, we will be, as soon as possible, uh, able to uh, monitor such big area, maybe 10 times larger than today. The first step will be to develop bigger and bigger uh, surface uh, drones to the benefit of Conventional, I would say conventional mm -hmm. surface ship. Uh, in this uh, distributed uh, model of uh, surface fleet at sea, the drone will bring a lot of extended range of uh, detection, of uh, surveillance, etc., to the benefit of uh, just one frigate. So that's really be the first, I think, the first step uh, before sending a full uh, unmanned fleet at sea with all these uh, weapon systems, etc., Then you will have a conventional fleet, at least maybe reduced to just one, uh, one frigate, a big one with several drones on board, and then you will extend the range of surveillance and the, the, the capabilities of the, these only frigates thanks to all these surface, subsurface, and air unmanned vehicles. There's another topic I wanted to, to talk about is the management of energy on board ships. Um, we know that different navies are working on new laser weapons, Um, there are also rail guns that probably will be on warships in a few years. Um, there are more powerful rad radars also coming in. So that's a lot of energy um, that the ship is going to have to produce. So how do you, how do you manage that, all that need for energy on both warships? Yes. I will start because, um, in my point of view, um, the main uh, energy issues are for submarines right now. But you will see maybe that uh, uh, there will be some uh, benefit for surface warships also. For submarines, uh, you, you know that the main issue is to remain stealth and uh, to reduce what we are talking, what we are calling indiscretion rate. Uh, this is a time spent at periscopic death, periscope death, to reload batteries for conventional submarines. And for, for submarines, it's a great challenge to remain submerged for weeks uh, or, and the longer possible, like, just like uh, nuclear submarines. Uh, for that, uh, we have a sort of air independent propulsion system. Uh, that means that uh, we don't need to come back at periscope depth uh, close to the surface uh, to launch diesel engine. Uh, this air independent propulsion system is based on fuel cell of second generation. We have at, at Naval Group now a very powerful system, very safe because we are not storing Uh, hydrogen on board. Uh, this system is working with hydrogen and oxygen and to produce electricity. So, uh, safe system, no hydrogen on board. We produce it uh, with a reforming diesel oil. Uh, second, uh, uh, the ability to remain submerged for weeks uh, because uh, of uh, energy storage on big batteries. Uh, and last point, uh, this system is very enduring and uh, very easy to support because we don't need to reload uh, hydrogen 
uh, on the other side of the world. So this first point is about air independent propulsion system. This allows to remain submerged for two weeks, uh, around two weeks, maybe more in the future. The second point, uh, very important also for submarines, are new batteries. You know submarines in the world are electric submarines, in fact. Uh, so they need batteries. And progress in new batteries, new generation of batteries, you heard about lithium-ion batteries, uh, are uh, going very fast. And uh, with this sort of batteries, uh, we will be able to reach a very high speed to store a lot of energy and to be able to use all the spectrum of the battery potential. And with the, this both system, uh, we will be able to, uh, to, to reach very high performances uh, for the benefits of navies, to remain submerged for weeks, to be able to gather uh, and to share intelligence without being detected, uh, and to act firmly, uh, if necessary, using powerful weapons, which are also fitted with a powerful battery of this generation. And uh, for, for surface warship, Issues. That, that's exactly what you, you are talking about for the, the new generation of weapons like laser or uh, uh, electromagnetic uh, weapons. The ships will have to store energy. That, that right now they produce energy and they, they use this energy, but they don't store it except for uh, survivability, but that's a, a low level. So we, we have to increase this level of uh, energy storage for the next uh, generation uh, weapons. And, uh, and so all the work which is done on the submarine for the propulsion and to remain at sea for a very, very long time will be probably used on board surf the next generation surface ship to manage this kind of weapon. But this story, uh, energy storage will be also very useful, for example, of the, as Stefan said, for the, uh, the, the power management on board. Uh, for, you, know, you don't have to start uh, another engine if you have an instant uh, uh, need of uh, energy for a new weapon, for example, etc. And, and also to provide uh, acoustic discretion, because uh, uh, sailing on, uh, on a battery also for a surface ship is very, very silent. And in a, um, a submarine uh, uh, war, for example, they will be, it will be very useful to have this kind of possibility on board, uh, on board a surface ship. And also to uh, be free of uh, sailing in very protected areas on a battery uh, propulsion without any uh, gas uh, emission uh, propulsion system, for example. So there are several uses of the uh, energy storage and energy management also on board the uh, surface ships. In another group, energy issues are one of the main investment posts of R&D. There's um, an, a threat that we just mentioned earlier. Uh, we talked about cybersecurity. Um, I know this is something you're also working on. So is it a driver when you're designing a ship now, cybersecurity? Is, is it something that you have to take into account right from the design of the ship? It is. It is. And, and it is done right now on the new frigate uh, FDI for the, for the French Navy. This concern has been uh, taken into account at the very, very early stage of uh, the design of the ship. Uh, even in our own uh, engineering capability, produ production of the ship, etc. Uh, cyber uh, security is taken into account in all areas of the, from the uh, design, the construction, and of course the delivery and the use of the, uh, the new warships. So uh, we design a, a new uh, architecture taking into account the cyber threats right in the beginning. It, it is really in the heart of the, uh, this new frigate, the, uh, the FDI. But we also developed in Naval Group uh, the uh, capability to uh, integrate cyber uh, protection of uh, already operational ships. Uh, so we have two, uh, two ways of uh, uh, managing the uh, cyber defense. On the uh, actual ship, uh, which are operational and used by the French Navy, we provide the Navy uh, the, the cyber management system with all the sensors and detection on uh, several uh, systems on the ship and the cyber management system I will talk about uh, later. And it's built inside the heart of the, uh, 
of the uh, FDI, uh, FDI frigate. And this, uh, all the, so the, the, the systems are equipped with sensors that to detect any uh, virus or abnormal uh, uh, behavior of the, of the system. And uh, all these information are gathered into a, a centralized cyber management system to the benefit of the sailor, uh, which provide a very clear and operational view of, uh, of the state, the cyber state, on the, the, uh, of the, the ship, on, on, on the own, combat system, platform system, everything. And the, this system uh, detects, analyzes, and proposes a solution uh, to manage a, a detected cyber threat uh, on board. Is it also an issue for submarines? Uh, yes, of course, it's also an issue for submarines. Of course, submarines are feel a little bit less vulnerable because no electromagnetic waves uh, underwater, but uh, it's the same, absolutely the same issues. And as we are using the same technology, uh, the same system will be implemented, are implemented on board uh, naval group submarines. Well, Erwin Stefan, thank you very much. Uh, this is all for second themes. We'll be now moving to the third one. Mm -hmm.